This is the Hagman and the Hagman Report for today. It is Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman. With me in the studio is my co-host, my son, fellow investigator Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and the Hagman Report. Folks, you're about to hear Reverend Michelle Hopkins. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Uh, Reverend Michelle. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show, Reverend Michelle. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. And, and that's a very Wow, very concise, well articulated summary of 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 things that we see. But one would ask, and I would ask this: if the if the seals have been opened, wouldn't we really know in our spirit, in our heart, and even from a biblical script, scriptural perspective, without a doubt, that they were open? Well, you can only know by going into the Scripture and learning the Scripture. The Scripture says, God said himself, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And if I don't get into the Scriptures and really study the Scriptures and know what they say so that when the signs happen, I can tell where I am. Like when the fig falls from the tree, I know where where I am in the season I should know where I am in the season of this timeline because of what Scripture says about it. And if Scripture says that this this spirit is bent on conquest and I've seen this happen in history, I know that's open. If I see that these descriptions are going on, that's how I know it's open. It was opened in heaven, and I'm not in heaven. Okay? That's a good point. Okay. Yeah, I tend to think a little bit... um, a little, it, I, I focus on the basics and then the larger picture, and uh, you know, that was just a question I had. You know, wouldn't we know with a with a degree of certainty mm-hmm. that in fact, you know, that, that that this is taking place? But I can see where you're coming from, and of course, taking place in heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I I fully understand. And, and folks who are jo- joining us now, we've been. T- talking with Reverend Michelle Hopkins, a very prolific, uh, a very articulate uh, 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 evangelist. Thank you. Is, is that... A biblical teacher, yeah. Uh, yeah, a scriptorian. And, and uh, your YouTube channel, uh, Reverend Hopkins, is what? It's just that, Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Okay. And it's really easy. All you just do is go to YouTube... Put in Rev. Michelle Hopkins, and you'll see one of my videos. Just click on my name, and you'll be right on my page. Yeah, I, I was looking at that. You've got like six million or or six point five million uh, views, or uh, I mean, just an incredible amount of traffic <laughs> to your YouTube channel. And yes, it's really heavy, really heavy traffic. Standale uh, said, you know, we talked to he he mentioned one of your videos on our show a couple weeks ago. Uh And I was talking to you about this before the show, and I was going through your YouTube channel just listening to the videos as I was doing dishes, and all of a sudden I heard my voice, which always freaks me out. And uh, he said, you know, you're a good Christian woman, and um, we've had so many listeners ask if we could have get you on the show. And uh, Uh we have a a live chat room right now that has – it's full. It's got 500 people in it, and people uh, are absolutely enjoying this interview very much. And uh, we're running up against the end of the hour, but we're going to have to have you back on this wait, month. Wait, wait, Joe, I can't let her go. I, I've got to ask okay. a question because I, I was unplugged earlier. Uh, uh, Reverend Hopkins, what do you see happening? And you might have covered this as I was trying to uh, duct tape my wires back. No, I'm just kidding. As, as I was trying to get back on air. Uh, what do you see happening here in this, in the near term, in the short term, in the Middle East? And when I say that, I'm talking about, we'll say, be, between now and the end of the year with the Middle East. Um, well... I think scripture gives us a little bit of a uh, a heads up on that. And it says uh as far as Damascus is concerned, Syria, in that day their strong cities which they left because the Israelites, because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth. It will all be desolation. And we already know Israel has struck certain targets so that she will not be in so much danger. Uh, We already know that uh, 
weapons that are chemical weapons have been used. And I believe that Israel is going to be forced to strike to protect herself in such a way that these chemicals and possibly even biological weapons, uh, that scripture talks about what it's going to be like when all this goes down. And, and it really sounds like biological and chemical weaponry being set loose. And I believe it's going to happen probably before the end of the year. It may happen before ISIN on December 1. So. Interesting. Okay. And, and the just to put this in perspective, because we, we've had authors, uh, or the author Bill Salas on talking about the Psalm 83 war and uh, noting that uh, Israel would be in a state of relative peace before the Ten Nation Confederacy came came against the nation of Israel, and we're not seeing that relative peace uh, at this moment. So, uh, uh, my last question to you before the uh, uh, before the break is: uh, Psalm eighty three war? Are we? Is is that? Would you see that happening first, or? the war referenced in Psalm 83, or, or, or is it um, less specific than that? Is it, is it more kind of vague? This is, this is what I see going down. I, I believe Israel has already been living in a, in a time of relative peace. In other words, the only people that have really been coming at her were the Palestinians. And, and you know, uh, Israel has kept them at bay. But so they've they've experienced their relative peace, if you will. There's time now that the other nations are going to be brought together. But this is what I think is about to happen very soon. I believe uh, Israel is going to take over the the Temple Mount. When that happens, it's going to hit the fan. There's going to be no other choice but for all of these. Islamic nations to come at Israel, at which time the uh, Antichrist will show himself by brokering this seven-year treaty. When this seven-year treaty happens, half of the, uh, the mount, the Temple Mount, will go to Israel, half of the Temple Mount will go to Islam, and the, the outer court which is where the Dome of the Rock sits, is going to go to Muslims. The Islam is going to be left to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And the other side, which is where the Holy of Holies used to sit, the new temple will be built. And three and a half years after that, uh, into this tribulation, when the temple's fully built, sacrifices are actually started up again. That's when the Antichrist comes in, and uh, then after some some more military unrest, and he he goes into the Holy of Holies and so forth, and creates the abomination of desolation. The earth, um, the people of the earth, particularly America, I believe America is the eagle. Whenever you see uh, it talking about the eagle coming in and helping Israel, we are the eagle, our military might. I believe that is America. Um, I yeah, believe, that makes sense, right? I, okay. Yeah, I believe we will be helping Israel, and then the Antichrist and Islam will have to pull back, and there will be three more years, three and a half more years. During that time, the last three and a half years, the two witnesses walk on the earth. They have their ministry on the earth, and it's at that time that Satan turns his face toward uh, Christians, everyone besides Israel, because Israel is protected, he turns his face a against Christians and martyrdom begins on a scale never before seen. It is during this time that the days will be cut short because if they are not, no one on earth would survive. Well, that's correct. No flesh would be left alive. And uh, Reverend Michelle Hopkins, we've come up against the end of the hour. It went by so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to have you on again uh, very soon, as I know 
things are going to continue to unfold. Prophecy is going to continue to unfold. And hopefully we can break this down a little bit more and help show people how it is unfolding so that they can understand the time of the hour we're in and, and know that we need to turn to Jesus now. And if not now, Absolutely. it won't be ever because we don't know that there is time left to do so. Time is so short. Thank you so much for having me, and I would love to come on again. Oh, we'd love to have you. In, in fact, uh, um, you can count on that. And, and in fact, w- folks, we're going to have a hard link up to uh, Reverend Michelle Hopkins' YouTube channel after the program. Uh, Reverend Hopkins, thank you so very much for your time tonight. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, you, you well. too. And ladies and gentlemen, keep her in your prayers as she continues to be on the front lines of battling these evils in the world that people aren't picking up on, uh, not in the right-left political paradigm, but fighting it on a spiritual level. Keep her in your prayers. And um, we will be speaking with her again shortly in there. And uh, can't thank you enough, Reverend Michelle. Thanks for having. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Indeed. Thank God you bless. so much. God bless you. Bye now. All right. That was a great first-hour interview. We're going to be right back. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.